When I spoke to the people in um, Italy and at the Vatican, um, it's my impression that the people at the Vatican really understood what we were facing and the evil that is rising up all around us. And it's my impression that people over in Italy understood the threat of Soros and the threat that he poses to our very survival. After I left the Vatican, I got onto an airplane and I went to Greece. I left here after the Cardinals. And uh, I think I had another meeting after that. And then I got into the car. We drove to the airport. And I flew to Greece. I wanted to learn firsthand, if I could, what was happening there. Uh, I, I said about this point on the airplane, uh, this could be the, the biggest waste of money <laughs> I've ever done. Because we didn't set up any interviews. We didn't set up anything. We set up a driver. That was it. And we were going to see what we could figure out six hours, one night, overnight in Greece. Just a few days earlier on the streets of Athens, they were, it was this, the shops were on fire, government buildings, the streets, literally everything I know now. I believe that's the central bank of Greece. Um, this is across the parliament building. I know where all of this stuff is now. They were under assault from anarchists and other violent radicals. After the riots, the buildings really looked like this. This is a mall that they burned down to the ground. This was so insidious. The police, uh, the fire department tried to come, but the rioters laid down on the street. 200 of them laid across the street. They knew that that was the only way they could get to this mall, so they laid down. It took them two hours before they could, they could clear the people out of the streets to try to put this mall out. It took hours and hours, and the whole thing burned down. More than 40 tons of rubble from some of the riots. Sides of buildings were smashed. But this stuck out. This it was everywhere. Why were they smashing it? Why didn't they smash the window here? Why did they smash this? They smashed the sidewalks and the sides of buildings. And this is, these are some of the things I picked up over. Here, I'll go back over there. They said, pick these up. This is actually part of the sidewalk in Greece. And um, they were sitting like this, part of the sidewalk but they were all loose. I picked them up to bring you these. These are smashed and broken up on the street, just like these are. This is marble, and it's all smashed because this is what they're hauling and uh, taking out of the street, and they're throwing this at police. This will kill you. It's not exactly light. This is a pin from a canister of tear gas. This is a pamphlet that just says, basically, uh, release the anarchist from jail. It was a spooky place. The smell is something that I really um, wish I could forget. Um, I saw more graffiti than I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and the smell is, I mean, picture New York City on a very hot summer day. The trash is stinking a high heaven, and somebody is urinating over in the corner times that by about a thousand. That's what this place smelled like. It was awful. It smelled like urine and feces. Everywhere you went, you ran into destruction, burned out buildings, and graffiti. I saw more graffiti than I've ever seen in any city, and I've been to New York. A lot of it looks exactly like this. This guy, by the way, this guy is an anarchist communist. This guy is an older, they look young, but this guy's, he's either done so many drugs that he, he no longer looks young, or he's about 35. Um, spooky, dark, dark, dark dude. Um, I think he was on heroin. Uh, I talked to him for a while. Here's our cameraman over here, the documentary. This says, anarchy equals freedom. And they believe it. Many people we ran into believe what that sign says, that anarchy is freedom. There's an element of society there that is creepy. In fact, the whole place kind of gave me the, sh the chills. There were a couple times that we were like, ugh, chills. Everybody on the crew said the same thing. Are you creeped out? And the saddest part is you just feel like the life of people has been beaten out of them. This guy was high, and we saw this a lot. 
Um, I think it was uh, heroin. This is what I said. As soon as I left, I said, this is not, he was carrying a beer can. I said, this is not, this is not beer. And it's this, this, this is heroin. We got back in the car, we ran around the corner, and we got out warning here. The next picture is of graphic drug use. Um, but we walked down the street. Now, there's a lot of people on the street. And here this guy is, and he's, he's shooting heroin. He's sucking it out, and then he spit, there is, he's spitting it out. And you can see all of these holes. He's shooting up, see all the holes? I mean, this guy. And he didn't even mind us watching it and filming it. It's The Walking Dead. I heard a line this weekend. I don't know where I heard it. Um, but it was basically, I'm going down swinging because at least when I die, I won't have already been dead. I like that. The whole place, the, all of Athens, felt post-apocalyptic. There were stray dogs just roaming the streets. Here you see a dog here. There's a dog. Oh, this picture doesn't have it. There was another dog sitting right over there. Um, and there was a dog. I was sitting on the steps of Parliament, and this dog just walked up. And they're all friendly. Yeah, here it is, this dog. He just walked up. Tag. They're all tagged, and they're all domestic animals. They were just, this dog just walked up to me. He just wanted to be pet, just have somebody pet him. The dogs are on the streets because people can no longer afford to keep their pets, and so they're just releasing them, and they're everywhere. Bad things are coming, and it's, a lot of it is happening because of people that want power and money. Bad things are coming, and people are not putting things together. Two days ago, mass gunmen stormed into a small museum at the birthplace of the ancient Olympics in southern Greece. They made off with dozens of antiques up to 3,200 years old. Last month, this Picasso painting, I don't know who would steal that, but I could do that. This Picasso painting was stolen. It had been given to Greece by Picasso in 1949 in recognition of the country's resistance to Nazi Germany. Okay, most people say, okay, big deal. It's just it's people stealing pictures. No. People stealing in antiquities. No. No. I don't know. I have nothing but my gut to back this up, but uh, I bet you it's right. I contend it's the very powerful and wealthy people that are collectors. And they know things are only going to get worse, and other people will say, I want that. And you're going to see pieces disappear from art galleries and museums all around the area. And you probably won't ever see them again, maybe till the next generation or the generation after. Let me go back to the sign with the two guys in the graffiti right across the street. There was no graffiti. Right across the street from, from this scene, this direction, was a university. At first, I didn't, I didn't put together that the university was fine and everything else smelled like urine and feces. The universities in Greece have become the church. Think of it this way. You know the story of the Hunchback of Notre Dame? The hunchback was brought into the church, and the gypsies ran into the church. Why? Because it was sanctuary. The universities in Greece have become their church, their sanctuaries. As soon as rioters cross the threshold of one of the buildings in the universities, it doesn't matter. They can take a Molotov cocktail and throw it, run across the street, go into the university, and as soon as they're in there, police can't take them. Even with a warrant, they can't arrest or they can't go in until the university president says, okay, go in and get him. And so far, he's not in the mood of doing that. Our universities are becoming our God. Universities are becoming our church. And it's happening all over the world, here and in Greece. When I was in Rome, I was... I want to be careful because I don't want to send the wrong message. I just didn't, I don't know, I just, I expected, I expected the Vatican to be a little more distant from our problems. 
I felt at peace because there are powerful elements inside a major global organization that understands exactly what we're fighting. Just like every other group is fighting, they're fighting an internal battle as well. Your church will, their church will, my church will, our organizations will, everybody. There's good versus evil everywhere. There is a fight on the inside. But I think the strength is with those who get it. You need to stand with the people who get it and shore them up so they don't feel alone or they'll be lost and so will we. Now, I had the exact opposite feeling in Greece. It bothered me so much that, like I said earlier, shivers went down our spines. Quite honestly, it felt like New York, future New York. It was creepy. I wasn't alone. You remember the heroin addict that was doing this? What was really scary is, th this was kind of like their Mardi Gras or Halloween. People were dressed up. Look at this guy, dressed up as a Jewish rabbi, I think. Why he was, I don't know, but this was happening at the same time. People were walking right by this guy, and they were parting. It was like a scene out of F. Scott Fitzgerald. It was I Am Legend, and it's what's coming around the world. It's why the trip to the Vatican was so important. It's why this meeting I had to start a global tea party is so important. We have to stand together. 